and welcome to Ability in Focus. I'm Rachel Travato, Disabilities Coordinator at the Hartford County Department of Housing and Community Services. I'm excited and honored to be your new Disabilities Coordinator, as well as host of Ability in Focus. So join me as we explore the events, activities, and programs designed to keep people with differing abilities active, engaged, and included here in Hartford County. We'll drop in on a practice session for Cheer Abilities, a new cheerleading squad that's keeping spirits high at Bel Air Terps games. We'll hear from business leaders committed to hiring people with differing abilities and how that's created a whole new work environment. And we'll talk to one employee who's stepping up to the challenges of the work world. We'll help celebrate the ARC Northern Chesapeake Region's 70th birthday. We'll get some tips on how to include the deaf and hard of hearing in conversations. And we'll get a taste of the fun and excitement at our annual Employment Recognition Awards Luncheon. But first, you may already be familiar with We Rock the Spectrum Kids Gym in Forest Hill. Well now, they're on the road. They've launched a mobile bus with sensory safe equipment that's making it possible to have sensory play anywhere. Let's take a look. is a mini gym that sensory gym that we can uh, go where the kids are and they don't have to come to us we go to them so sensory sensitive equipment is equipment that just activates all our senses our feeling our touch balance uh, all the different things that kids are learning uh, as they're growing and they are developing and so it's just and it it gives them a way to do all these things and activate all these senses in a um, fun environment so with We Rock on Wheels, when the kids come into the bus, so they come in and there's a little zip slider they can do, there's a rock climbing wall, there's monkey bars, there's several swings, a little trampoline, and then the slide out the back. And we also have the different equipment and activities outside the bus so that they can kind of rotate in and out and uh, play, but it's all a lot, and we're dealing with all the large motor uh, skills that um, of just of kids development. The population we serve is are really all kids, all abilities. Our mission is inclusion, so we invite uh, just any kids who like to be active. We have the kids gym in Forest Hill, and we wanted a different kind of uh, way to reach families, reach uh, kids, uh, be a support to the community. And this was just a way to incorporate just a, a different way to reach more people and share our mission of inclusion with the community. For more information uh, uh, about We Rock on Wheels, you can uh, look at our We Rock the Spectrum Forest Hill social media pages or give us a call at 410-891-4600. Cheering on our favorite sports team is something we all love to do. And now there's a new cheerleading program that amps up the excitement, the inclusion, and the fun. Got it, got it, got it, uh, and let it roll. Bang, bang, choo-choo train, hit roll. Bang, bang, choo-choo train. Come on girls, let's do our thing. Get it, get it, got it, got it, uh, and let it go. Yee-haw, what's that mean? Yee-haw, what's that mean? Bye. What's that mean? Yee-haw, what's that mean? Yee-haw. Cheer Abilities is a team that we created for anyone who has disabilities to come out and cheer with our program. Tonight we are practicing our cheer competition routine that we are going to compete with at our next three competitions that are coming up. This is a new program to Bel Air Terps. There are two other cheer abilities that are in Baltimore County, but we are the first one for Harford County and we're hoping to continue that. 
My daughter's extremely excited when I tell her that we have practice or a game to go cheer at or competition. Um, so I will sign to her, the sign for cheer is cheer. So I'll tell her that and she gets her shoes on, she gets her uniform on, she fixes her own hair and she's ready to head out the door. Even if it's not time to go, she is ready to go right when I tell her it's time for cheer. The whole concept to inclusion for me is just making sure that everyone feels safe and welcome and that they're loved and have somewhere that they can just be themselves to express themselves. Cheer is definitely a sport where you're able to do that. Even though you're learning a routine that a coach has made for you, there are spots in that routine where you can express yourself and just really shine and show who you are. So I have noticed a difference in our cheer abilities athletes from when they first met us at Uniform Fittings to now. They've really blossomed, they've clicked with their coaches, they're very loving and they just express their, their inner energy to us and they're like just very positive and we love that. So they've been very shy in the beginning but have really opened up now and we love seeing them being able to bloom. I love everything about cheer abilities. Um, the fact that my daughter is actually included in something is so huge to me. Our cheer abilities cheers at football games at Tucker Field on Saturdays, and then they also compete at competitions that we have. There are four that they are going to be competing at. The Terps fans have responded with open arms. The girls love having the cheer abilities come to their games. They get standing ovation at competitions. They've really just embraced it. I think that's one of the things that's been great about it, is it's not only good for our girls, but it's also teaching these other children that are involved in the program how to be a good friend and how to include someone that might not just be exactly like them. Cheer abilities adds fun, inclusion, and just learning to be yourself and loving who you are to the cheer world. So to get more information, you can email myself, and that is krista at belairrec.org. The people who want to contact me is anybody who wants information about the program, if they want our kids to come out to any of their events if we're in season, or anybody who wants to sign up to coach, they can just reach out to me for any of those things. Maryland residents and visitors now have the option to text 911 if they are unable to place a phone call. To send a text, enter 911 in the two line. In your message, include the location of your emergency and the type of help needed. Si el servicio de enviar mensajes de texto al 911 no está disponible o no es ofrecido en su área, usted recibirá un mensaje diciéndole que contacte al 911 por teléfono o por TTY. 911, call if you can, text if you can. Welcome back to Ability and Focus. We recently held our annual employment recognition luncheon where we honor businesses and companies who hire people with differing abilities. Let's hear from some of them. Acadia Windows and Doors has been hiring people with differing abilities since 2003. Uh, that's 20 years. And we started by placing an ad in the Aegis looking for good workers. The ad was answered by Jan Stoffer, who's a job developer for the Art Northern Chesapeake region, who said she had good workers. So that was the first opportunity. Uh, well, Shoe Department been hiring um, disabilities um, candidates for a few years now. And um, from my experience, it has been working out very well. Sephora has had a program in place in our distribution centers across the United States for about six years. Um, we've had the program running specific in Harford County for about two years now. Beginning back in 19, the mid-1990s, uh, we started working with various businesses in the community, educating them on the benefits of hiring people with different abilities. And I think Harford County probably has one of the highest rates of employment in the country for people with differing abilities because the businesses are so receptive. The program that we run is nine weeks long. It's a paid training program for individuals with disabilities. They come through, kind of learn the soft skills of the job as well as the production functions in either of our warehouses. And then after the training program is over, if they're successful, they're offered a full-time job with Sephora. Well, at the shoe department, we do shipment. So they, we have them help bring the shipment out and also put the shipment on the floor. They do um, cleaning, maintenance. We have them, they greet customers. So we train them on customer service. Well, when they first come in, we do what I call role play. So I act as the customer to help them, you know, to relax and be calm and, um, and, if, and tell them don't be nervous. So, just make it short, just speak to the customer. 
Thank you. Um, welcome to the shoe department, and that's it. In manufacturing, everything is quantified. I have a quota, the people in the plant have a quota. So we have good metrics on everything. The people supported by the ARC Northern Chesapeake region are in the top 3% with regard to attendance. They're within the top 5% with regard to productivity. And I can't put a number on attitude, but if there was a way to do that, they would be in the top 1%. They're awesome, they have a lot of longevity. We have people that have been with us for over 15 years. We've had some that have come through from the beginning of the program here and they've made lifelong friendships and they have friendships outside of work. Um, and one thing we hear often is, you know, this was also an opportunity to build social skills as well as employment skills. Because we have people that are differently abled, we are a kinder company and we are a better company because people um, work alongside those that are differently able, then they learn about them and they become friends and they do things socially. Uh, they hang out in the lunchroom together, we have a basketball court, they shoot hoops together. It's all that inclusion that um, the team has worked. If you exclude people, then you're missing what contributions they can make. When you include them, then everybody grows, everybody learns, everybody is better for having had that opportunity. We choose to do good for the people and just bring them in. It's our way of giving back, not just to that particular community, but to the world in itself. Employment is the key to inclusion in the community. When people have their first job, they start to make those relationships with people who now become their coworkers and then become their friends. And in your community, there are people who are differently able that you're not even aware of because you're working with them, they're working in the stores you go to, the businesses you patronize, they're there already. It is the most incredible thing to witness when somebody gets their first paycheck, when they have their first opportunity to be the person who pays for something instead of their parents, when they have an opportunity to say, I'm a part of something. If you're an employer that hires people that are differently able, your team will be stronger, you'll be kinder, you'll be more efficient, your customers will appreciate your involvement in the community. The message that I would like to leave people with about hiring people with disabilities is that you're going to be better off because you've had the opportunity to work with people who have different abilities. Your business will be better because you've hired people with disabilities. Your community will be better because you've hired people with disabilities, because everyone is included and everyone is participating. It's a win-win for everybody. At our Employment Recognition Luncheon, we not only honor employers, we also celebrate the workers who are holding down jobs, enriching their work environments, and showing the world around them that they're ready, willing, and definitely able to get the job done. Meet Employee of the Year, Trish McBride. I work at Citizens Care Nursing Home. I work in the kitchen. I do cold production. I do coffee. I um, line start. I answer phones. I do the dishes. And I run trays to all my residents. I love it. I like best about my job is the residents. They're very funny. They're so good. Like, I can just go up to them and be like, Hi, how was your day? I've worked at Citizens Nursing Home for four years and want to work there more thousand years. Forever and ever and ever, it's very important to me because I've had experiences where I haven't had a job where I've been out on the streets and I know what it's like. It sucks. So I'm happy that I have my job. Even though you have a disability, you still are able to work and others need to see that. At the end of the day, I feel like I've accomplished 
what I needed to do for my residents, taking care of them, getting what they need, getting what they want, feeding them. I'm there to represent what to do for my patients. It's not about me, it's about my patients. I love my job. Our Employment Recognition Luncheon is held every year in October to coincide with National Disability Employment Awareness Month. This year, it was held at the Richland Catering and Events Center in Edgewood, where more than 100 guests, including County Executive Bob Castley and Maryland Secretary of Disabilities, Carol Beatty, helped us honor employees who have exhibited exceptional ability and determination in the workplace, as well as employers, individuals, and organizations that are helping to change attitudes about people with differing abilities in the workplace. Our keynote speaker, Marcus Moore of More Crunch Pretzels, delivered an inspirational speech reminding us all of what someone can do if we give them a chance. Here's a look at the event and some of the people we honored. My favorite thing to enjoy in Harford County, Maryland, the baseball. The tradition. The fine dining. The craft beverages. The parks. The trails. The boating. The history. Harford County, Maryland, something for everyone. The Harford County Commission on Disabilities has done a great job connecting people with programs, resources, and events for people with disabilities, their families, and caregivers. There's a complete listing of programs and services in the Harford County Resource Guide. You can call to request a resource guide or access one online. And here are more places to get the help and information you need. And of course, there are also events, fundraisers, support group meetings, 
and a whole lot of other activities that you need to know about because we want you. Meeting new people can be stressful, especially if you're deaf or hard of hearing. Well, Paula Honda is here to help us out with some tips on how we can make introductions and first impressions easier and more inclusive. Hi, my name is Paula Honda, and my name sign is P for Paula and H for Honda when I'm working in the school with the students. And I would like to teach you some um, introduction to uh, when you meet a deaf person. You would like to say, nice to meet you. Do it again. Nice to meet you. It's like two people coming together face to face. Do it again. Nice to meet you. Or you could say, if you have deaf friends that are going on vacation, you tell them, have a wonderful vacation and be safe. Um, let's see, another, okay, how about happy anniversary? We have so many people that have been married a long time, and you, and you go to their party or to their events, you say, happy anniversary. And then our students that are graduation, graduating from high school or college, you tell them, congratulations, you did a good job. And your parents are very proud of you, and we are very proud of you. So these are some of the special things that you can say to our deaf community. Thank you very much. Today, behavioral health issues affect as many as one in five people, and we have developed a center to provide a single point of contact and access to care if you or a loved one is suffering from a behavioral health crisis. A behavioral health crisis refers to both mental health and or substance use issues. The very first thing you or a loved one should do if experiencing a behavioral health crisis is call our 1-800 number. This number will connect you quickly to an experienced team of behavioral health professionals who can help you assess your crisis situation and decide what your immediate next steps should be. These steps can include a mobile crisis team visit to your home, coming to the crisis center or setting an appointment for next day assessment, calling for emergency services and going to the closest emergency room, or a referral to another resource in our area. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP when you need help and please visit our website to learn more information about the services we provide. Before we go, let's celebrate a birthday. The ARC Northern Chesapeake region is celebrating its 70th anniversary. This is an organization committed to empowering people with differing abilities to live independently, find employment, and engage in social activities while ensuring safe and supportive homes for children in foster care. Let's take a look at their last 70 years of success.
for sharing this time with us here on Ability and Focus. Let us know what you think about the show and what you'd like to see more of or less of. You can contact us with your ideas and suggestions for Ability and Focus. Until next time, I'm Rachel Travato. Mm -hmm.